we're going to show you how we do this finish in the paint shop today. And we're just going to go through and, and do the process and then we're going to talk about the secret that makes this finish possible. Now we had a request on our Instagram to not only do it in black with a white glaze, but to do it with a light gray and a black glaze. And we're going to do both. We've completed our two uh, finishes, the light with the dark glaze and the dark with the white glaze. Now what we did, and, and you, as you watched, you noticed, we painted our color and then we put on the black glaze and then we took a soft sanding sponge and sanded the grain to highlight our black glaze that was in the grain. We did the same on our black finish, we sprayed our black stain and on the on way we did it we sprayed our paint we sealed it then we put our glaze on and then we top coated after we had gone through and sanded our grain to highlight the grain of the wood now we told you at the very beginning of our video that there was a secret to make this come out and we're going to show you that secret now okay we've done our beautiful finishes now of our very uh, cool looking finishes and I'm going to show you the secret that allows this type of finish to look this way. Um, typically when we do a piece of wood we sand nice and smooth and we stain and seal and glaze and do whatever and in order for the stain or the glaze I should say to uh, settle in the grooves the secret is to texture your wood and not just sand smooth. Sand first and then texture and I'm going to show you that but one of the other things that you need to re remember is this works on wood that has a real open grain like oak and I've done these two pieces on oak and this is a piece of red oak also and it works real good on a piece of red oak but on a, on a wood that has a, a, a smoother grain like a piece of alder or, or cherry this particular type of finish doesn't do well. So remember that your selection of wood type pretty much has to be oak or ash or something like that. But let's show you what we did. By highlighting the grain, you need to wire wheel it or wire brush it. If you have just one small piece, you can just take a wire brush and wire brush. Or if you have a little bit more and put a wire wheel in your drill, you can wire wheel it. I had quite a bit to do and so Makita makes a nylon brush wheel on a almost like a belt sander and I'm going to show you how that works. This is a very cool piece of, of a tool to have if you are going to do a, a lot of this and uh, we're going to just demonstrate how this works. Oak has a very open grain and a very distinct difference in the soft and hard portions of the grain. Your hard portions are the portions that don't grind down. Your soft portion or your grain portions are the parts that sand down and allow the stain. Now, you can't see it very good in a piece of wood like this, but I wanted to show you on the white piece. You can really see the distinct 
texturing that is necessary in order to make this finish work. And that's the secret. Start off with the right kind of wood, oak or ash or something like that, and texture your piece of wood. Then you spray your paint, your glaze, your sealer, your glaze, and that's the secret to doing this very unique finish. Hey, today on Woodworking with Wes, we're have, we have a special request. We're going to answer a question. Um, actually, several questions and a request. You remember we did a video showing these two, we called them high-tech finishes. We learned afterwards that it's called Saru's finish. We did another video that showed the process in detail of how we got these two finishes. And we had several requests on, can I redo an old kitchen and make it look like this? Well, I really didn't know. So we did some investigation and some experimenting. I went and I bought an old golden oak door and drawer face just off of a, of a remodel job. Now, a little bit of history. You know that I've talked about the fact that I've been a cabinet maker for many years, 45 years. I built kitchens exactly like this for 10 years, 30 years ago. This is something that, you know, you know you've been in the business a long time when you start remodeling your own work. Anyway, this is a kitchen that looks exactly like kitchens I did a long time ago. When we were doing these kitchens in Golden Oak, oak is a great wood. I love oak. We did a lot of them, like I say. It's a great wood to work with. It machines nice, it sands nice, it holds up really well, it's very durable. And these kitchens that were done a long time ago, well taken care of, last a long time and still look good. But the golden oak has kind of gone out of style. Even though some people still like it, it's still a great finish. I don't have any problem with golden oak, but trendy, it's not. So I went and bought some of these and I fooled around and I did a ceruse finish. You can see these two drawer faces right here are exactly the same. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this door and we're going to go through the process that I used on this drawer face to turn it into a nice ceruse finish, white with black glaze. So let's get started. We started off on our refinish job, we'll call it a refinish. We started off by just wire brushing, a good stiff wire brush, and just wire brushed it. Now, before I wire brushed, I took some lacquer thinner and I wiped out, wiped down my door to wipe off all of the oils and greases and things like that that come from use, years of use. I wiped it all down, cleaned it all off. Now we'll get ready to wire brush and I'll show you how we wire brush. We'll just go through it. We'll wire brush this door, then we'll take it to the paint shop and do the finish. I started off by doing the ends cross grain, and I'll show you why I do it cross grain this way. We started off doing it this way, like this, across the bottom of the door. Bottom rail and molding. And that takes off, you can see how it takes off some of the old finish. But what it's doing <clears throat> is digging down and highlighting the grain so that our glaze will hold. So we're going to go ahead and do this all on this door. Now, one of the reasons, like I said, we talked about doing the cross grain first. If we did a cross grain last, your scratches would show up when you did your glaze. So do your cross grain like this first, your rails, ends of panels, and then come down. So let's cross grain here, then you go through and you straighten out your wire brushing on your style stock, on the face of your panels, down the edges here, down your molding, and you do that in that succession so that when you do your paint and glaze, your glaze looks very nice, you don't have any cross grain scratches. So let's go ahead, wire brush our door. We 
We've spent about 10 minutes now wire brushing this door, scrubbing really good and hard. I want to show you one thing. We had a dent in the door that was fairly significant. If we would have left that, that would have shown up as a big black mark with our glaze. So I filled it. Now I'm going to take the wire brush and wire brush away the putty. And now this is just going to, with the paint, you won't see the dent anymore and when we put the glaze on it it'll hide that repair that I did won't show up and so if you have any repair work on your on your existing kitchen fill it wire brush it it'll disappear you'll see when we get over to the paint shop you'll never know I did that repair we're all done wire brushing now off to the paint shop We've just completed giving two coats of white vinyl uh, on our door. If you look real close, you can see the grain is highlighted by our, our uh, wire brush. This is where the glaze is going to hold. But we're going to go ahead and give this a soft sand now to smooth out our vinyl primer. And then we'll put the glaze on. Now, again, the vinyl primer that I use. So we're going to take a soft sanding sponge. We're going to sand our door and then we're going to glaze it. Okay, we've sanded our white paint now and the sanding sponge that I use is just a sanding sponge that I buy from my retail paint supplier. I use extra fine so that it doesn't scratch my finish. And I just sand it down so it's a smooth. You can see where it powders up on my hand. Now we're ready for glaze. Okay, I'm all sanded. I blew it off all the dust so that it would be nice and clean. Now, if you don't have a nice paint shop or a place to paint, just make sure that wherever you paint is well ventilated. If you're painting outside or in a garage or something like that, just make sure that you're well ventilated when you paint and wearing a ventilator mask if you don't have a really good paint shop. My paint shop is set up so that I don't have to have that unless I desire to have it. Where I was just doing one door and talking to you, I didn't wear one. But we're getting ready to glaze now. And I apply my glaze with just a little throwaway brush. Paint it on very generously. Make sure you get down in all the grooves. That's what we're trying to show off. I like to wear gloves so I don't have to clean up as much. And uh, just paint your glaze on there nice and liberally. I always paint my outsides first so that I can hang on to the door in the middle. And then I paint my middle last. Okay, now we're going to go around and wipe, and I just use a paper towel to wipe my glaze. And we're not going to take all the glaze off, we're going to clean up the glaze. But we're going to try to leave a good coat of glaze because we're wanting our grain to stand out. Now see, there's our, we start wiping up and there's the grain starting to show. That's what we're looking for. Glaze also highlights the profiles on your style and rail set. We'll want to do that too. Now 
Now there's a trick that makes your white and black really stand out, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But let's first off, let's get the glaze in here really good. do the face of our panel. Again, make sure you get plenty of glaze on there so it gets down into those grooves that we spent so much time creating with our wire brush because that's what makes the grain stand out is the glaze in the grooves where you've wire brushed the grain. So there's our panel. Like I say, plenty of glaze. All right. Have a paper towel. The reason I like to use a paper towel, first off, they're inexpensive. And when you get done using them, you just throw them away and it makes your cleanup much nicer, much easier. I use it for my stain and my glaze. Whenever I stain the kitchen, I stain and then I wipe it with paper towels and it's just always worked really well for me. Okay, now that's as far as we're going to go right now. And you can see that that doesn't have the really pretty black and white that we like to show. The trick is we're going to let this dry. We're going to come back with our sanding sponge and we're going to lightly sand and we're going to sand away this kind of cloudy finish that's on top of the grain and leave what is in the, uh, the grain that we uh, wire brushed out and it will make it look much whiter and the black to much, look much darker. Then we're going to put two coats of clear top coat over the top of it and our door will be finished. But now we've got to let it dry. We'll come back when we're ready to sand. We've allowed the glaze on our door to dry for an hour now and now we're getting ready to clean it up so that it's really white and really black on our paint and glaze contrast. This is the sponge that I was talking about earlier. I'm going to use a little bit different size of, or type of sponge. It's still just a sanding sponge, but it reaches into the profiles a little better. It's just another one that you can buy from your paint supplier. So let's get ready and let's sand. and highlight our grain. So let's go along the edge here. Here's our edge profile. See how the white jumps out? Now, it looks like the black is disappearing, but what that is, is that is just a little bit of our paint sanding off into the grain. We'll blow that off with our blower, air blower, and that will take all of that sanding out of there and it'll darken those lines up again really quick. Oh, look, yeah, isn't that going to be fun? Look how that grain pops out. The glaze in our grain pops out like that. Okay. Let's do the other end. The cross grains first. Remember we talked about the cross grains. We'll do that even in the sanding of our paint so that we make sure we don't have any cross grain marks. I do that when I sand my lacquer and everything. I always sand with the grain when I'm sanding my doors after I assemble them. I sand the same way. I always sand with my grain doing my rails and first and then my styles next. And then on my panels, end grain, and then long grain. And 
Okay, let's turn it here. Start doing the long grain. of our raised panel, same way, the inside of our style and rail profile, leaving a little bit of great glaze to highlight our profile. Let's flip around here, get the edge again. Remember how I always do the edges first and then the panel last? Same thing here. I love the way this is turning out. It really is bringing that green out. That's hard to believe that that was a golden oak door. You could do the same thing in reverse. You could paint the door black and put a white glaze on, or any combination, a gray paint with a lighter glaze, anything you wanted to do based upon color choices. I just had white and black as a choice to really highlight the difference. Okay, now, doesn't look like our grain's very bright right now, but let's take it over to our blower and blow off the dust. Okay, there we are after our initial sand. Now I'm going to sand it just a little bit more. Let's put a top coat on it. Ta-da! We've sprayed our top coat and it looks beautiful. Now this top coat, we just used a lacquer. Hi, today we're going to continue our series on cerusing golden oak here on Woodworking with Wes. We've also had a lot of comments. We've talked about that before and in our continuing series, we try to answer as many of those comments and questions as we can. Today we're going to answer a couple of them also, but before I get started, there's a question that I'm going to answer that requires just a little bit of verbal explanation. I was asked if we could use a stain or a gel stain as a substitute for glaze. I talked to a factory representative of ML Campbell today and also a painter that works in a paint store and I asked their opinion about what we were using about what could be used as a substitute and whether or not stain or gel stain would work as a glaze. Well, gel stain and stain won't work. Not because they don't apply the finish in a similar way and, and give you that ceruse look. It's because they don't adhere to the primer underneath and so your finish won't last. That's important if you're doing a job in your, or doing a, a project in your kitchen or a piece of furniture you want your effort to not be a temporary one. And so we found that out and I just wanted to pass that information along. Now, they did also tell me that if you're having a hard time finding ML Campbell products, 
that there are many types of primers that will work and that also glazes are available at Home Depot, Sherwin-Williams, and those glazes, although they might act a little bit different than the ML Campbell glazes that I like, they still are a glaze product and will work just fine. But let's get started and ceruse a couple of golden oak doors. Now I went and found some drawer faces. These drawer faces have actually never been on a kitchen. These were some leftovers and we were able to get a hold of them and we're going to use them for our color samples. We've also had a uh, comment to ask us once again about the wire brushing, so we're going to go through. We're going to start right from the very beginning. We're going to wire brush, then head to the paint shop. Always when we do our wire brush ceruzing, we start out with the cross grains at the bottom. We're going to use a smaller wire brush for that. We're going to use this wild, smaller wire brush for the edge also. We want to wire brush the edge of the door so that our ceruse works all the way around. This textures the grain and highlights the grain so that when we put our glaze on, it really shows up. I have a little bit larger wire brush here. and now. I found that if you have a good uh, sharp wire brush, works better. My other one was getting a little dull and I was having a hard time with it. I went and bought a new one. When wire brushing, we always do the cross grains at the end first and then wire brush with the grain afterwards so that we take out any cross marks that we might have. Let's go ahead and finish up our, our texturing. Now, we've commented several times to several people that are asking about color choices and and how to do a project to do a test piece. Do just like I did. Go to a garage sale or a remodel site and pick you up some leftover pieces and use your, those for your samples. And then when you get ready to do your project, you'll know exactly how to do it and what you want to do. Let's go to the paint shop. For our color choices for these uh, samples, we're going to use a tinted vinyl sealer that's kind of a green color and we're going to use a pre-catalyzed lacquer that is tinted a real dark gray and then we're going to use white glaze on both. Let's go ahead and go all the way through and then talk about it when we get done. paint is dry and so now we're at the glazing process. We're going to use ML Campbell white glaze and again like we talked about uh, there are other kinds of glazes that you can use but we're going to use glaze, white glaze from ML Campbell. I'm just going to apply it with a staining uh, sponge because we don't have any profiles that we need paint brushes for and then once the glaze is dry we're ready to move on. We're going to make sure we get plenty of glaze on here so that it gets down into the pores of the wood that we've highlighted with our wire brush step. I'm going to go around the outside edge first. And like I say, I always clean up with just a paper towel. Ooh, I can already see I'm going to like this finish a lot. This is way cool. Now, I did not do the back side of these drawer faces because this is just a color sample. So when you look at that and you see the golden oak on the back side, yes, we did not put any paint on the back side. This is just a color sample. I'm 
I'm sorry, I gotta put my eyeballs on so I can see. Oh, looky there, hmm. Okay. Oh, that is such a good looking color, just the way it is. Just a very light glaze on there, really highlights the grain and the profile of the edge of the door. I kind of like that just the way it is. I think we're going to leave that one just like that. Oh, I love that. There. Let's see if we can get the same kind of thing off the green paint. Again, edges first. Whenever I use my staining sponge, I always like to put my stain and whatever I'm working with, glaze in this particular case, in a circular motion like this so that it drives it down into the grain of the wood and really, really brings that grain out. That's why we like wood, is because we like the grain of the wood. Now that's just a very light glaze look on those two colors. Oh, I like that so much. Let's wait for that to dry. Put a top coat on. All done in the paint shop with our color samples, you can see what a dramatic difference it makes from our old golden oak color to now a beautiful ceruse finish. I like them both. Both would be great for a bath vanity, laundry room, or even for a new look on your kitchen cabinets. It's a great way to spruce up existing cabinets. If your cabinets are in great shape, your golden oak color is just getting a little tired on you, Here's a great, great, great solution. Recently on a video with Woodworking with Wes, we introduced you to a new glazing product that we came in contact with from ProCoat. It's called Unicoat. And we have found it to be a really a superior glazing product. In fact, we are using it for anything that we glaze now. This is the only thing we're going to use. And we've had some uh, requests as to different colors because I got this sample kit that has 30 different colors of glaze. That is the one thing that I really like about this product from ProCoat is the different colors of glaze that are available. Oh, by the way, I want you to stick around to the end. They've offered us a special opportunity for you if you decide to use this product. But let's get started. We had done a video a long, long time ago about diff using different woods, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to show you the different glazes. Now what I did, I took some old golden oak wood. This is the original finish. This is the golden oak finish that we cut up. I took my wire brush and I wire brushed it just like we always do when we do ceruzing. So I wire brushed the finish. 
Then I painted it with my uh, Fresh Start Benjamin Moore primer. I put two coats of primer on it. Then I sealed it with poly polycrylic. And this is the finish that we're going to be glazing right here. And so we're going to first start. I'm going to show you how to paint. We're going to paint our white on this. We're going to seal it. And then we've made six samples that we're going to use different colors of glaze on. So first off, let's paint. I've got a little block of wood or block here so that I can get up off of the surface here. Let me put on my glasses so I can see. Oh, look at that. Anyway, um, I've already stirred my paint and this uh, primer that we're using is a primer that I've used several times now and I really have kind of fallen in love with it as far as a primer coat. It just really does well. Um, it usually takes two coats and it did on this piece. It took two coats of primer in order to cover that golden oak real well. And then like I say, then you've got to go back and seal it because this is not a primer sealer, it's just a primer. But it's a really good primer and so that is what we'll be using. Now you want to make sure after you've gone through and, and used your wire brush, you want to make sure that your primer coat isn't too thick to fill in that grain. Now we did a, a door with this white paint and black uh, Unicoat glaze. I invite you to go back and look at that uh, video. We are not going to do the black, the white on or the black on white again. We're going to use some other colors, but you want to make sure that you don't get your paint so thick that you fill up the grain that you just got through wire brushing out. And so there's our first coat of paint. We'll wait for that to dry. Come back, give it a second coat of paint, and then a thin coat of polycrylic for our glaze. We've gone through our sample pack. We've picked out six colors that are kind of varying shades that I think you'd like to see. And like I say, here is our sample, all painted white and sealed. And so let's get started. We're going to put it on there. We're going to spread it with a little chip brush and wipe it with a paper towel. And we're just going to go front to back. Our first one is Oak Barrel. And when you always make sure you mix them up, shake them a little bit and stir them. It's kind of a gray color. I'm going to set it off the side so I don't get it mixed up. If you've ever watched me, you know that I like to take a brush and, and brush my glazes into the grain. And then wipe it up with a paper towel. This is just such a nice smooth glaze. I just love this glaze. There's our first color. Gives it kind of a gray look. Next sample. Next color. Whether uh, let's let's do this one. I like this color. This is Sedona Red. Really a red glaze, kind of a cool glaze. Like I said, that's one of the things that I just really love about this glaze is all the different colors that are available. And it's just so much fun to have an opportunity to use different colors of glaze. And when you use your base coat in a different color, now I'm doing everything on white so that you can see the contrast. So don't get hung up on the fact that you can only use white because you can't. You can use any color you want to. But any color of base paint that you want to use that is complemented by the color of glaze that you would like to choose to go with it. But I just wanted you to see the different colors of glaze as I tested them. And so I'm doing them all on white. Um, let's 
go back to that weathered oak. Like I say, make sure you get it all mixed up. It has a real gray look to it also, but a lighter gray than our other one. Oop, I need a little bit more. Where do we go? There we are, weathered oak. All right. Much lighter gray, a very soft gray in comparison to our other gray. More subtle in its coloring. Yeah, very subtle. Put those two grays together, you can see the difference in the grays. Yeah, very cool. Okay. This is a great way to test your colors. Okay, this one is English chestnut. It has a real rich, rich brown color to it. When I was testing it a little earlier, I kind of liked it real well too. I like them all. That's the problem is I like them all because it's just such a beautiful glaze to work with. Make sure that you work that glaze down into that grain and uh, then when you wipe it off that, glaze, that uh, glaze sticks down in that grain and highlights that grain and oh yeah There you go, there's another beautiful color. All right, our final color that we're going to do for the white paint is antique brown. Very dark brown. This glaze has kind of an oily, uh, like an oil-based glaze feel to it. And I like that because it doesn't dry too fast and it allows you to work your glaze and get it around to where you want it and down into the cracks. And then to clean it up with your paper towel, I just, like I say, there's just lots of things about this glaze that I have really, really enjoyed working with. A little darker color on this brown here. Okay. Right there. Now, we have one more color to go, but we're going to do a white on black. Now, in the spirit of full disclosure, I didn't have any black primer. So what I used was a can of spray, uh, just a rattle can of black paint. And I tried a little sample and it worked okay to demonstrate the white glaze, but it's probably not gonna be as nice as this because it's not a true primer. 
But let's give a look and just see that the black, the white on black is very cool too. And I would, if I were to do a, a project, I would make sure that I had me some good black primer to make sure that it came out correct. But for demonstration purposes only, we cheated. So just so you know, I cheated. I'm fessing up. So you can see the black kind of rubs off a little bit. Your primer would have worked so much better with a black primer. But you can see how a black and white look is just so cool. Just wonderful. This has almost a little bit of a crackle tone look to it because of the paint that we used. But anyway, there we go. Let's take a look at those side by side. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our little demonstration of Procoat Unicoat Glaze. It's a great product. These two colors right here, this, this uh, uh, well, it better look so I can remember, um, Oak Barrel and Weathered Oak are just such a cool kind of a gray farmhouse, modern farmhouse. If you're doing some any modern farmhouse kind of decor, these two would be great for that. I mean, that's a great color. I love those. But anyway, like I say, this is a great product. And it is the only kind of glaze that I'm going to use from now on. It's a wonderful product. They have provided us with a code so that you can link to them and get a 10% discount on the products you buy from them. And it's, like I say, a great product. Anyway, it's been fun to have you come and watch us do a little demonstration. And we look forward to seeing you again on Woodworking with Wes.